All right, good morning and welcome. It's Corporate Governance Platform right here on Eco 89.7 FM. I am Fumi Omoburiwo. Corporate Governance Platform is brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, which is a leading recognized professional body in Nigeria that is dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. I also like to tell you that the Institute is a member of the Corporate Secretaries International Association, CSIA, a Hong Kong registered global organization that's dedicated to developing and growing the study and practice of secretaryship to improve professional standards, the quality of governance practice, and to improve organizational performance on the program this morning we're going to be looking at the concept of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance and we have uh, joining us mrs inkechi ayima fcis she's a uh, chairman of the Lagos state chapter of ixan she's also a principal partner and i am an associate uh, firm of uh, legal practitioners good morning madam Good morning for me. All right. Happy Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. All right. I also have on the program Mr. Kaudi Ketefe, who is head of research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning for me. Good morning, our listeners. All right. We'll take this message. When we come back, we'll talk some more. Hey, Obina, good to see you. Uh, you look so worried. Is everything all right? I'm having serious issues in my company. Balancing the interests of my company's many stakeholders like shareholders, management, customers, financiers, governments, and communities giving us a problem. Mm, that has to do with corporate governance. Exactly. Then, you need to get in touch with ICSAN. Ixan? Yeah. Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. ICSAN. They provide you with seasoned and top ranking professionals trained to uphold the standards of corporate governance and efficient operations. You can also get in touch with Ixan if you want to become a chartered secretary and administrator. Contact Ixan by visiting the website www.ixan.org or call 0096601 Six nine. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, so corporate governance platform right here on 89.7 FM. And I said we'll be talking about the concept of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance. Uh, Ms. Saima, let's look at um, what exactly uh, does transparency and disclosure mean? Hello? Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Definitely. good. Okay, great. Go ahead. I think we can start by defining it from the provisions of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 2018. So I'll refer to that as the code. If we look at Part F, Principle 27, it explains transparency as stakeholder communication. Which stated that communicating and interacting with shareholders keeps them conversant with the activities of the company and assists them in making informed decisions. And then, if we look at that principle 28, to explain disclosure as full and comprehensive disclosure of all matters material to investors and stakeholders and of matters to the company, which ensure proper monitoring of its implementation to engender good corporate governance practice. So in simple business terms, what are we saying? Transparency simply means you can tell what is going on. This brings about trust. So if you as a stakeholder can see what is going on in the business, you know you are not being misled. Motives become clearer and credibility is affirmed. Disclosure, on the other hand, is a time-honored tool of regulators to achieve transparency. So for example, food and pharmaceutical manufacturers required for you to disclose ingredients in products. Medical authors are required to reduce payment sources. So certainly we can't find out what is going on if you keep information hidden. So disclosure is necessary for transparency. So stakeholders, and when I say stakeholders, I mean investors or shareholders, employees, customers, 
for clients and even by extension, the community and government. They don't want to know what is going on in a business. And then the court provides the tools to disclose this transparency. So, okay, so let's look at uh, why this notion of transparency and disclosure is regarded as so critical in corporate governance. Frankly, every business wants to make money. Corporate governance then ensures that it is done within the right framework. So the objective of corporate governance is to monitor parties that control the resource of the company, like the board of directors, to ensure that they have an improved corporate performance accountability so as to give long-term value to shareholders. So transparency and disclosure are essential elements in a robust corporate governance framework. They provide the base for informed decision by stakeholders and potential investors in relation to things like capital allocation, corporate transactions, and even financial performance monitoring. So with transparency and disclosure, more responsibilities are put on companies, not only to let the truth be available to the public, but it imposes on them to disclose it to every stakeholder, the different stakeholder groups and the company. See, yes. if you look back to major financial crisis at the past, mm-hmm. particularly in respect to large corporations, we can remember the big N1, we can remember com- companies like Walmart, Zero, Cadbury. We can generally agree that the main failure leading to this financial crisis stems directly from the lack of financial disclosure and inadequate governance practices. So companies are now under pressure to provide timely, consistent, and accurate information to shareholders and the public regarding their financial performance, their liabilities, control and ownership, and even corporate governance issues. And for the fact that investors' rights are growing in awareness today, Corporations need to focus their efforts to elevate their transparency and disclosure so that mm-hmm. the overall level of corporate governance will now be seen so as to benefit all their stakeholders. And that's one of the objectives of the court. All right. Do you think there is any additional disclosure responsibilities on companies arising uh, out of the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic? Definitely. Sad to say, many of us as you know, are still grappling with some of the effects of this global pandemic. And even more so, our companies. We can see some of these effects in the drastic drop of revenue in companies. Companies are battling with volatility in demand, supply shortages, labor shortages, changes in their products, even as a result of the impact of the lockdown. And so these developments would affect the company's critical accounting estimates and assumptions, which require disclosure to the extent that this change is material. Investors and other stakeholders need high quality financial information now more than ever before so as to continue to have trust and confidence. So beyond the regulatory requirements of disclosures, it's important for companies to provide investors with insight within their assessment of their planning for addressing and even material risk in their business and operations resulting from the coronavirus to the fullest extent possible so as to keep investors and markets in front of material development. Fully, I will tell you again, this is not easy because no one wants to be a bearer of bad news. Okay. The companies today might be tempted to hide the worst. But we should remember that investors are aware of what is happening in our immediate environment and even globally. So everybody knows that the numbers are bad. So what investors are really after is knowing how bad it is and what are the key steps being taken by companies to counterbalance this effect. So mm. for me, in this crisis, company disclosure now should focus more also on, one, in responding to investors' interest, where the company stands to be, operationally and financially. Two, how the company's COVID-19 response, including its efforts to protect the health and well-being of its workforce and its customers, is progressing. And three, how it operates and how its operations and its financial condition may change as efforts to fight COVID-19 progress. Because we know that this information is not easy to develop immediately. Since if this is something that is new and everybody is grappling with it and changes occur rapidly, but we know that it is important to give this information to keep investors and stakeholders properly informed.
All right. W will you say there is any obligation, uh, especially on the part of board of directors, to disclose uh, the COVID-19 status of themselves and uh, all their uh, employees? Hmm. Truly. In fact, this crisis period will test the ethical values of every board more than before particularly in the issue of this transparency and disclosure. Mm. Because it is easy to hide. The layer even leave out information as regards this crisis because it no one the negative scrutiny of regulators and stakeholders. So the answer to your question is that there is no black and white definite answer. For me, the safest thing to say is it depends. If we can recall the high profile example of the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the disclosure. Thankfully, he recovered from COVID-19. But that is a requirement in policy, and it is not so in corporate laws and regulations. So we have corporate examples of disclosure, like Morgan Stanley that disclosed that his CEO, James Gorman, had fully recovered from COVID. Interestingly, this disclosure was after the fact. We know that regulations require that companies disclose certain types of information regarding directors and even their top executives such as appointments, resignation, or even removal. But there is no such requirement with respect to their health. Mm. So direct and top executives have the right to keep their personal medical information private. So whether a company will decide whether or not to inform investors or, or, uh, that their top executives or that, uh, you know, their directors have contracted the coronavirus, it calls for a delicate balancing act. Companies have to weigh the importance of the individual to the company as against their privacy rights without unduly spooking employees or even stakeholders. You know, you don't want to scare your investors. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, several blue chip companies have agreed and taken the position that they will in fact disclose this information because they think it's a good practice. But this is different from the law telling you to do so because there is no such regulation. But we know that definitely disclosure opens up a lot of issues, such as how to disclose, when to disclose, uh, what to even say, then the issues of updates. So in a nutshell, this is a delicate matter and must be weighed carefully by companies in exercising their discretion. Well, all right, thank you uh, so much, uh, Mrs. Nkechi Aima, CIS Chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of Ixan, Principal Partner, and I am an associate uh, at a firm of legal practitioners. Thank you so much for joining us on Corporate Governance Platform. Thank you, too. All right, uh, Mr. Ketefe, I'm sure we have uh, some announcements uh, to read out. Thank you very much for me. We have a few announcements. Okay. To start with, this is to announce that the 46th annual general meeting of our institute, the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, will take place on Thursday, 9th of July, 2020. The venue is National Secretariat, which is Plot 6, Elephant Cement Way, Alausa, Ikeja, Lagos. Time is 11 a.m. It needs to be added, however, that in view of the restriction foisted on corporate organization individuals by the rampaging COVID-19, which uh, in which uh, mass gathering is not allowed, I think with the AGM will now be heard electronically via Zoom. The link to this will be sent to members in due course. The second announcement has to do with the institute examination. It's supposed to be held last uh, day this month, June. Mm -hmm. But by virtue of the constraints which I've already spoken about, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the, the government council has now fixed the date to be August, Tuesday, August 11, and Wednesday, August 12, 2020. For the uh, information on this, people can call 080-906-60169. I want to also announce that the closing date for registration for this exam is 24th July 2020. 24th of July 2020. Okay. Lastly, the Corporate Governance Audit Committee Workshop has been slated for June 23rd, 
to 24th, 2020. Each of the day, it will start at 9 a.m. and end at 2 p.m. The participation fee for member is 30,000 Naira. For non-member, it is 35,000 Naira. The workshop will be held via Zoom. For more information on this, interested participant can call 080-615-24764. Let me take that again. 080-615-24764. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kadi Ketefe, Head Research Ixan. And uh, this morning, we've looked at the concept of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance. Join us same time, same station next week. That's 10.15 a.m. next week, Wednesday, right? And creating 9.7 FM for another edition of the program, Corporate Governance Platform, brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, I am Fumi Omoburio. Good morning and enjoy the rest of the day.